after your opening questions, <coughs> your next step is qualifying questions. Yeah. Your qualifying questions are questions like, is this the qualified person? Is this the qualified person to make the decision? So the qualification question is like, is there anybody else that needs to be present in order for you to give me a decision today? Or do you make any decisions? It's a straightforward question, but it's not, they won't get offended. You're asking basically to see if you can make a decision. Um, is there anybody other than yourself that needs to be present to see my presentation in order for you to give me a decision today? You used today, because you wanted today. Um, who other than yourself started the business? No, it's just myself five years ago. Great. You know any of the silent partners or anybody like that? No, I'll make all the decisions. And you know you're talking to the right person. So it's quite a fine. Can you ask who can like to be the pants in your house? <laughs> you can do that as well. Sometimes say, yeah, no, I need to speak to my wife. Uh, it's, a lot. Yeah. Lot it's a very touchy one. <laughs> well, I need to speak to my husband or whatever. You know, um, usually it's a, it's a woman running her own business. She needs to speak to her husband because her husband's financing or helping her out with salary or something like that. You know, you've got to be very careful there um, because you can either blow it or she's just giving you an excuse or he's just giving you an excuse. Um, I've tried it once or twice, but I don't always do it. I'll, uh, Depends on the client. Uh, if the client says to me, I need to think about it, or I need to speak to my wife. Um, if you ask me, I need to speak to my wife, I would then ask him, sorry, so with all due respect, if you go for lunch, you ask your wife what you buy for lunch. Okay, it's, it's, it sounds rude, I think it, but it, it can either backfire or it won't. Okay, because a man's got an ego. Okay, and I'll, I'll wear the pants, you know, I'll make decisions. It's not, it's, it's very touchy, uh, but sometimes it works, you know. Surely you don't need to speak to wife to make a decision or turn off thousand rand, please. You know, um, I'm sure she'll be happy to see the end result once you've made a decision. You would agree with me, wouldn't you? <coughs> so good. Those are all the little questions, tie down, I'll go through the tie downs and that now. But whatever they say, you've got to tie it down. You've got to create it into a question in order to get a yes. The more yeses you get, the more closes your life. Okay, any questions? Now, I, I just thought to myself that comment of surely you don't need to ask your wife. With certain people, you can do that. If you have <laughs> yes, you can. Ice breaking you can. questions. Yeah. The guy, you're a hunter, he's a hunter. Yeah. You know the guy, perhaps. Maybe one of your family or friends yeah. you know, can probably say that easily. Yeah. But that's why I say it's, it's borderline. Don't, you know, you're going to shoot yourself but, in the foot. Well, if he's going to ask his wife, he's most probably not going to take the side anyway. Yeah, he's probably not. Then I mean, he hasn't seen the benefits, and it's just an excuse. Because mm -hmm. a person will say anything just to get you out of his office. Yeah. And once you pick that up, then just take your stuff and go. Because you're wasting your time. You're not going to convince. It's like hitting yourself against a brick wall. You're not going to get through. Mm -hmm. Then you just, you just start on. asking the question. Just move on. Move on. Leave your card. Thank you for your time. Cheers. You know. Um. <coughs> okay, so you've got the qualifying questions. Once you know that you're talking to the right person, <coughs> then comes your preparation, your presentation. Now your presentation, your presentation, what is a presentation? A presentation is a preparation for a close. Okay, that is what a presentation is. A presentation is not show and tell. I'm not going to come and show you something and take my stuff and leave. I'm presenting you to you in order to close. If you've got that in the back of your mind that you're presenting to close, you're presenting to close, you're close. So a, pres a presentation is a preparation for a close. You're preparing the client to give you money or the series of questions that you're going to ask him. Okay, then you run through your presentation. Okay. I don't know what you guys do with your presentation. My presentation takes about five minutes, five, ten minutes. What do you do? What I do is I sit down, I say to him, right, I'm going to show you a couple of websites that I've done. I then open up the QuickWap website, the homepage. 
I open up one or two other websites that I've done. I say to them, right, this is Quick Wrap homepage. On the homepage, it sees that we set up a website for you for 2,500 Rand. No updates that are. He sees that. I don't even have to tell him how much the website costs. Okay, he knows. In my presentation, eventually I will tell him, I'll ask for 2,500 Rand up front. I'll then start designing your website. Within five to seven days, I'll come and see you again for the training. Okay. <coughs> um, I will then run through the, I'll tell him where to log in, username and password. On the Quick Web website, I'll tell him I'll create a website, username and password for your business, and you put it in there in order to get into the back end of your website. Okay. I'll then put in a username and password of one of my clients, or I use my wife's, because my wife's got a beauty seller. Um, and I can send free SMSs and stuff, it doesn't cost me but, <laughs> but yeah, um, I then go into the site and I say, right, this is the back end of the site and this is the front end. Okay. Um, on the back end, then I go through and I show you, uh, manage website content. This is what under manage web website content is. Look and feel is changing colors, etc. Then I jump from there, I go straight to communication with customers because I know that's a benefit. And then when I get to the communication with customers, I ask him a question. John, wouldn't it be nice in order for you to be able to send SMSs to your clients? Letting them know about your monthly specials, your promotions, your buffet lunch on Sunday, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be. I go in, I open up the SMS, send an individual SMS to him. I then show him the custom SMS, the newsletter blog. I normally send the photo gallery. I'll send the photo gallery because if his cell phone is WAP enabled, he follows the link, he sees the same photos that he would see on the site. Okay, if it's not if it's not a if he's not WAP enabled, I'll tell him even the older phones still get the SMS and then tonight you can go onto your computer and you can follow the link and you'll see the photo gallery. Uh, but once I've done that, it's sold it's sold and he's sold. I know he's sold. Because while I'm talking to him the SMS comes through. And it's usually like a smile on his face. Um, Peter, yeah, that sounds like a great thing. I just want to quit my job at the office and start selling. I can just imagine, I won't put, say his name, but one of our consultants that uh, is successful, but I know he likes to go through all the different modules, yeah. how to write the newsletter, all that stuff. Yeah. I think if you spend too long time on that, yes. you're boring this guy. You want to exactly. spend on with his work. Yes. So this thing of going five minutes, yeah. just show that one thing, get get it yeah. done. Yeah. It, it just sounds much better than going through Absolutely. starting with okay, you write the newsletter, you add a product. Then you type your text. In a, you can do that later. If you want to go and spend three hours with a client later, you can. But don't don't waste time. It was like. You know what I'm saying? The guy, he's got to work, his phone's ringing, or his secretary's making appointments, or whatever. You've got to get in, get the clothes, get out. But, yeah, once I've done the communication with customers, I'll send them the SMS. As soon as he gets the SMS, I'll say to him, do you like what you see? Yes, I do. Can you see this benefiting your business? Yes, I do. Then the client asks me a question. How much does it cost? Or what do you charge? I charge two and a half thousand rand up front. And I use up front, because that's what I do. Two and a half thousand rand up front. Okay, great. When do you need it by? When would you like to pay me? Okay, question with a question. Not whenever you can or whenever you feel like paying me. When would you be able to do an EFT or do you prefer EFT or cash? No, I'll sort of go and draw the cash now for you. Take the client, put it in my car and I go to the bank. Okay, I've done that. You take the client to the bank, he goes, draws you the money, and it's done. It happens. Yeah. Okay. I've done that as well. Then you've built up your trust. Will you take a check? Sorry? Will you take a check? I'll take a cash check. Yeah. If you want cash, I'll go and cash it. Uh, but normally, if I say check, what I'll say, look, check's going to cost you money. It'll cost you 15 million for that check. Just do EFT for me. When would you be able to do the EFT for me? I'll do it for you tomorrow night. Great. I'll then take the paperwork once he's filled it in and I'll go and design his site. I'll register it. 
Tomorrow morning he gets a welcome letter from Quick Wrap. Congratulations, Mr. So and so. This is your username, your password, blah blah blah. I create his site. <coughs> but then it's not really something on the site yet. Yeah, it's just a shell. It's just a shell. Uh, what I also do is once I've signed the paperwork, I ask the client, what can you give me then then now? Do you have a logo that I can take? Do you have two business cards for me? Do you have a letterhead? I get as much information out of the client as I can on the first meeting. Because then I can take that and go populate the site. Okay. Uh, if he says he's going to email it to you, great. We'll email it to you. When will you email it to me? Tonight. Ready. Tomorrow morning or the next evening, I see he hasn't emailed me or he hasn't done the EFT. I phone him. Right, sir, so and so from QuickWeb. I think. I just want to confirm with you, the, did you send me through the email with regards to the letters and the vision, vision, vision statement, etc.? No, I haven't done it. I'll do it for you now. Okay. Did you manage to do the FT? No, I'll do it for you now. Okay. And just ask him, because he'll do it. Okay. Uh, once again, if the client is weary, if they've been burnt in the past, then you take that risk. One and a half thousand rand up front, a thousand rand on the train. Do it. You know. At least you, you've got a thousand five hundred rand out of it. Um, okay. So that's in my presentation. I've done the presentation, then is the closing. After the presentation is the close. Um, it happens also that people understand this industry. They've been on the internet, they know about websites, etc. Clients that you go and see. You might even jump from opening questions straight up to the close. Okay, that's what I mean is a presentation it doesn't, it's got a set procedure depending on the client. The client might say to you, listen, I understand all this, how much? And you haven't even showed him the site yet. You, you just want to prove that that's here, that's that. I understand this, how much? I understand I have to do my own updates and I understand this and I understand that, how much? And you give him the price. Straight away, your close is there. It can take five minutes. You do a presentation in five minutes. As soon as the client gives you a buying signal, you tie it down and you close it. Buying signal is how much does it cost? Two and a half thousand rand up front, sir. Would you like to pay EFT or cash? Uh, EFT, great. Take out my pen, my paperwork. Do you have two business cards for me? Two business cards? Yes, two business cards for me. Take the business card, start writing. The moment you start writing, he's either going to stop you or you're just going to carry on. Why do you ask for two business cards? Uh, <coughs> I take one. Uh, before, well, we used to have a design department, okay. but it's just a habit. <laughs> take two business cards because you might misplace the one. Um, and then put it in your folder. I don't know if you've got a sleeve or, or I've got a you know, flip folder, <laughs> um, plastic sheets. I take the paperwork, I take the business card, I slot it in there, and I take my thing and I've got it. And other business card I put in my pocket. And that's how you create business cards. You know? um, but yeah, that's why I ask for two business cards. Because that's a, that's a going ahead uh, it's a going ahead question. As soon as I ask you, do you have two business cards for me, please? And I've got my contract in front of me and I've got my pen in my hand. The pen's going to be like a maybe like a samurai sword. It's going to be ready. You know, as soon as it gives you that, it's got to be in your hand ready. Um, then either one or two things are going to happen. He's either going to go ahead with it. Or, <laughs> if, you, if you rush the close, the client might say to you, listen, whoa, whoa, whoa. you let Mark you know. <laughs> All right. If they ask you what Mark you know, you say to him, sir, I'm booking your space for you. Okay? If he stops you, then there's an objection. He's objecting to something that you've said. Then you've got to put down your paperwork, and you've got to find out what his problem is. Because if he's fully sold, he'll let you go on. Put in your ID number. Uh, sir, I just need your bank details. Boom. There's a pen. Put in the bank details for you. Okay. Um, another question that you can ask to lead to the close. What would you like your domain to be? www.yourbusiness.co.za. Great. Would you like one email or three emails? No, just one email. Great. The one email is for free first. The first one's for free, sir. Would you like it to be info at your business? Yes. Info at your business. Your ID number, please. Your ID number is da 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 da. You write the company name, and you turn it around, and say to him, I just need bank details, and the client will then fill in his bank details for you. And you run through it, step by step. I need you to authorize it for me, authorize it. As soon as he's authorized, that capacity, great. 100%, welcome aboard. 
clients is done. <coughs> Sorry, Peter, another thing I do also for the client on site is when he decides on a domain name, so it goes straight into the Hoover server. Yeah. Where's the Koza? And because often the names aren't taken. Yeah. And then, then you can visit, and I think it makes it easier for you guys as well. If you're yeah. Honest. Yeah. It does. Yeah. What I do is, uh, yeah, that, that's also brilliant. You can go straight on. While you're busy with presentation, you're asking for the domain. So it's in the just check if it's, if, it's, if it's available. That you can also use to close. Yeah. yeah. It's a great closing technique because you go in and you say, right, listen, Smith's wholesalers is not taken yet. Yeah. I'll, I need to book that space for you now. Great. There we go. Can we take it at any moment? You can. Yeah. There's three other things. Let's do what I do. There's got to be an urgency. Yeah. There's got to be an urgency for the sale. If, create, if the urgency is created, the sale can be done. It's, it's easy. Right, um, yeah, so it's opening, it's icebreaker, opening questions, closing, uh, qualifying questions, presentation, and close. Peter, um, <coughs> I just want to ask you this. So, the, the moment you get the buying signal, yes. is it the best to try and close as soon as possible and get out of there yeah. before he thinks of an excuse yes. or gets buyer's remorse? Or yes. Get a buying signal, you close the close. Stuff that paper in front of him and get out of there. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's because what you can do is you can oversell. Oversell. Okay. Overselling is the biggest mistake you can make. Because the guy can see the benefits. He understands what you're selling. And as soon as he gives you that buying signal, you close it. You take out your paperwork and you start doing the paperwork. You get out of it. Otherwise people get you get buyers remorse. And he's just gonna make the right decision. Okay, it's not a lot of money, 2,500 rand, I believe it's not a lot of money for what you're getting. Mm -hmm. But for some people it is. Um, but if you've done your job properly and you've created ease in that client's mind, you, you won't get cancellations. You won't. Um, a buying signal, there's, there's body language that you'll pick up. People say 90% of what they say with their body. 10% is speech. Um, <coughs> buying signals are Signals like the guy's playing with his chin. That's a buying signal. Okay? He's playing with his pen, it's a buying signal. Then what you do is you just take out your paperwork and you start writing. One of two things is going to happen. He's either going to say, well, what you're doing, or he's going to say, right, here's my business card. Okay? He's either going to stop you or he's not going to stop you. Okay? Um, if a person sits with his hands behind his head like this, He's already made a decision on what you've told him. Okay. What you do in that case is you imitate your client. Okay, clients are closed. Some of the clients are closed. You've got to get him out of that. Okay. You might be talking to a client and he does this. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. He's not listening to you. He's not. And what you do is you mimic him, you do the same. Great, how's business? Good. You know what? If I do that, you'll probably do the same. And as soon as he does that, he's open. The person closes his arms, he's not 100% listening to what you say. So does it just, if he's done this, he's already made a decision on what you do. I'll then take my pen, I put it down, and I do this as well. <laughs> <laughs> then he looks at me and he says, oh, what does that do? And I said, let me just show you quickly. And then I go back, because I draw him in. I said, come, let me show you. And as soon as he does this, and he's looking and he's concentrating, because it's, it's involvement. Selling is an involvement process. Selling is not telling. Okay, it's involvement. You've got to get your client involved. Um, I would even sometimes let the client do something on the site, depending on, you know, I'll say to him, click on change the background. Let's make it red. And I'll tell him, press control F5. Press control F5. Website refreshed, it's red. He's impressed, wow. It's part of his training already, he's done it. He's sold. Because he can do it himself. Okay. Um, <coughs> okay. Now you get closing techniques or different types of closing. There's a whole lot of them. There's just a couple here, but if you go through the sales books and you read up on them, there's a million closing <coughs> techniques. Um, Close one is the tie-down, okay? 
The definition of that is the question at the end of the statement that demands a yes or isolates an objection. Okay. Remember, an objection is a problem that a client has with his current product. That's an or he doesn't understand what you're saying. Okay. Um, oof, it's too much money. Okay. A tie down would be then, if I could make it more affordable for you, would you be willing to do business with me? Tie down is if I could make it more affordable. The problem is cost. If I can make it more affordable for you, would you be willing to give me an opportunity? Yes, I would. Great. Remember, it, it requires a yes or a no. That's a tie down. Um, it becomes a speech habit. Okay, practice. It's just practice, practice, practice. Um, your, um, in, or, in order to be able to SMS your clients off your website, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. It would be able to create more business for you, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Okay, so these are little tie downs at the end that you can say, like, aren't they? Um, hasn't he? Couldn't it? Isn't that right? You know, if you could get a website that works for you, you'd be happy with it, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. Okay, so it's little questions at the end, because the more questions, the more control we have. Um, don't you agree? Shouldn't it? So these are all little things that you can put on at the back or the front of the question or the statement. Um, some clients used to tell me in the past, listen, that's a lot of money. Eh? It is a lot of money, isn't it? Yes, it is. But let me tell you what I'm going to do for you. I normally charge my clients two and a half pounds a day. What I'm prepared to do for you today is, <coughs> I'm willing to take the risk because I want to build a business relationship with you first. I want to build a business relationship with you first. Okay. I'm prepared to give you this at 1,500 or 2,000. You decide what you're willing to do. Okay. You might not close it for two and a half, you close it for one and a half. But you're still going to do the site. It's better than that. Okay, so take the risk. Don't be greedy. Remember, you're there to help him. Um, I've sold a website for 1,500 rand here. But, but I don't care. You know, at least I know when he gets the website, he's going to be impressed with it. Because I'm going to show him that he can go onto his site and send SMSs. He can go onto the site and he can make changes. Wow. You know? Um, I had a client that told me, I told him I'll give you 1,500 rand. I mean, he asked me to go out and take photos for him. I went out and the whole day from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock, and I went and took photos for him, for his website. He then told me, he said, listen, you've helped me a lot. Don't you want a little bit extra for the website? I said, fine, but it's like 2,000. No, that's fine, great. He offered out of himself. I already made a decision on 1,500 because I've got my money and I know it's done. But he's offered me an extra 500 because of the effort that I put in to go take out photos for him. Where if you had to go and get a professional photographer to do it, it would cost him 750, 1,000 rand. Easy. Um, <coughs> okay. All right. Um, then you get the inverted tie down. The inverted tie down is putting the tie down uh, on the front more than, for more warmth. Okay, so instead of saying da 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 da, isn't it? Or da 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 da, wouldn't you agree? You know? Wouldn't you agree with me that having a website that can send SMSs would be a benefit to your company? Yes, it would. Okay, so what you do is you bring the question in front. So that's all it is. Those techniques are just front back, front back. That's how you use the tie down. Um, the tie down tag on. Okay, these are just fancy little words for it, but um, it's they say it, you tie it down. Okay. Get complete minor agreements. In other words, the guy says to you, you know what? Yes. I wish I could I wish I could update my own my own website. It would be nice to update your own website, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. He said it. It's a benefit that my company that my product has. I tie it down, you get a yes out of it. Okay, again you put it in front or back or whatever. Question of the question. Um, alternative alternative choice or alternative close. Okay. 
this is brilliant. Um, when I started out in selling, this is what I picked up. It was easy for me, and I used it, and it worked for me. And it will work for you as well. Because whatever you say, or whatever he says, it means that he's going ahead with it. Okay. Alternative close is, excuse me. Um, <coughs> I have a package, the whole package, costs two and a half thousand rand for a website. Okay. Um, but I'm running a special this time. I can do it for you for a thousand five hundred rand. Would you prefer two and a half or one thousand five hundred? No, a thousand five hundred. Great, welcome aboard. Two business cards, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's two choices. Either choice. He's saying that he's going ahead with it. Okay, whatever he's, whether he chooses the one or the other one, do you want a Coke or do you want a Sprite? No, I want a Coke. Great, there we go. It's the same thing, it's, it's two choices. Either choice is going to give you the close. That's the alternative close. Um, and it works, it works like a bomb. It's easy. Um, normally, if, even if you're in the beginning, just to get into the closing habit, discount your clients. You know, use it. Say to him, look, I normally charge two and a half thousand rand for the website up front, but what I'm prepared to do for you today is I'm prepared to give it to you at two thousand rand, provided we do the paperwork now. Oh, let's do the paperwork. Done. Okay. Um, then it's the porcupine. Okay. Porcupine is a question that buyers must ask themselves after they own your product service. If they ask questions before they own it, it, confirm, it confirms they're going ahead. Um, <coughs> a porcupine is a question, answering a question with a question. I gave an example earlier where a guy says, um, can I do a EFT or pay you cash? Which of the two do you prefer? Okay, that's a porcupine. Which of the two do you prefer? Um, um, would I be listed on Google? Would you like to be listed on Google? Yes, I would. Great. Let's go ahead. Um, do you tell them anything about Google optimization in your pitch and training? I do. Some of the clients ask me this and how does, will I be listed on Google or how does the Google thing work? I say to them, look, because uh, this is what I've learned now from what I know about the product is I tell them that um, you can go and do a Google campaign if you want, it's going to cost you extra money. Okay, but the content of your website, the text that you use in your website is important. So the more text that you put in your website, the higher you go up in the rankings. Okay, it takes between four to six weeks. When I often say but shorter now. But shorter, but I normally say four to six weeks in order for Google to pick you up. But I tell you now that if you work on your site, frequently and you do updates, after a year you've got a hundred pages on your website, your rankings will improve. Okay, because content, content, content. And then what I tell them is that this is how Google works. If I go and look for construction on Google and I type in don't oversell. Okay, that's basically the, the last well, the last point there. Don't oversell your product. If the person's giving you the buying signal, you go for the close. Don't carry on and carry on and carry on and carry on because then you're going to lose it. It's like, you know, I'll speak to you next week. Or whatever. So then you're going to oversell yourself and you're going to sell yourself straight out of the sale. Um, there's got to be a sense of urgency when you're presenting. You've got to do it now, sir. You know, now. You've got to create urgency in your presentation. And the person will buy now. That's why you, words, you use words like today and now. You know, if I can make it affordable for you today, then we do business. Yes, we can. Great. Affordable. Um, um, yeah, the last one don't accept, doesn't ex accept responsibility for the last sale. If you don't close somebody, you haven't. Is either you can't afford it or you haven't covered his real need. You know? um, that's the only reason 
why you haven't closed. So just accept it. Now I didn't close it, but I saw what and move on to the next one. Don't worry over it. Phone it open. Let's do it now. Oh no, no, no. Just leave it. So we're going to move on. Um, okay. So move on to qualities of most effective salespeople. Uh, listen, listen for clues to customers' needs. Okay, a customer will always give you a problem, and that is an opportunity to close. Uh, talk with your client, not, not at your client. Talk with him, relate to him. You, know? you sell the benefits. Um, goal orientation, goal setting is important. You know, set, your, set a goal for yourself, an achievable goal. Don't say I'm going to do 40 sites this month and you do five and get all upset and depressed and whatever. At least you've done five. You know, that's a realistic goal for you. Um, try and stay motivated. Read positive things. You know, read, 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 read. read I don't read newspapers. I just read news. I'm not interested. You know? Fill your head with positive things. Uh, objections that you get. Um, what are objections? Objections are statements that are made by customers during the sale that seem to get in the way. Okay. Um, I'm going to think about it. It's a very common one. I need to think about it. Um, with all due respect, sir, what is there that you need to think about? Is it the price? Is it the product? What, what do you need to think about? I ask him that. Okay, because he's giving me an objection now. I need to think about it. What do you need to think about? Is it then? then you haven't covered something that he needs. Okay, then what you do is then you go and find out. Is it the price? Is it the product? No, it's, you know what, it's the price. Then you've, you've isolated the objection. You then say to him, right. So what you're telling me is that two and a half thousand rand is a lot of money for you right now. It is, isn't it? Yes, it is. If I can make it more affordable for you, can we do business today? Yes. What is affordable? You ask him. We will say, oh, you know what, I've only got one and a half thousand rand now. I've only got two thousand rand. Okay? I'm prepared to do it for you for two thousand rand. Welcome aboard. Done the sale. Okay. Uh, it's too expensive. Okay, remember this when you're going to be shop, you're going to use the porcupine. It's expensive. Yes, it is expensive, isn't it? Sir? All right, but if I can make it affordable for you, can we overcome that objection? Yes. What's affordable? Okay. Uh, I need to ask my boss, I need to ask my wife. Or, you know, I've covered that. It's a touchy one, you get away with it. Or sometimes the oats just is testing it. Um, I haven't got the budget for it. That should actually be covered in your opening questions. Where do you advertise? How is it working for you? If a person is spending money on advertising, he's got the budget. Okay, for some people advertising a thousand rand a month for newspapers or magazines or whatever. This is two and a half grand once off. It's not every month. You know? uh, objections are sale makers. If the person gives you an objection at the end of your presentation, if, if you can overcome that objection, you've closed the sale. Because there's one or two things that are bothering you about being closed again. Okay? Just one or two things. If you overcome that objection, you've got the sale. Um, Alright, major objections are objections that the client doesn't understand. He doesn't understand what your product is. It's going to be difficult to, to close. You've got to make sure that your client is with you all the way. He's got to understand the benefits and the value of what you're offering. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. You have to make them understand. 
can go back, we can go back. Are we clear on that? Yes, we are. Let's move on. Okay. Um, when, you, when you hear an objection, the major objection, uh, there's four ways of approaching or handling an objection. You've got to hear the whole objection. What is this whole problem? Okay. Um, ask them to go into more detail. Let them tell you what the problem was in the previous slide or, the, or you know what his problem. Just listen to the whole thing, understand what his problem is and then give the solution. Uh, again, listen twice as much as what you talk. Don't interrupt him. Just give him time until he explains. Um, there's an example there. It says, for instance, a customer. Uh, it's a lot of money. And the sales guy says, of course, uh, you should be concerned about the level of your investment. The customer, but your real concern should be focused on the value of the money. Yeah. I know a client, um, she spent two and a half thousand rand for the website, she's an artist. Uh, I think within a week or two weeks, she got an order for 50,000 rand for her paintings. And consultant then phoned her and said, Listen, that's probably the best two and a half thousand rand that you ever invested in your life. Okay, because the product does work. Yes. Uh, if they didn't invest in a website, they wouldn't have made the 30,000 dollars work. Yeah. So use those examples. There are examples out there. Learn from other consultants what has happened. You know, there's, and use them as examples. Yeah, just, just another example. I uh, set up a photographer about three weeks ago. Um, photographs, uh, airplanes, car races, bike races, and so on. Because he's now on the website and he's got a gallery of people we can publish his photographs, within two weekends he can pay for the website. Yeah. So it's, he takes online orders, well, not online ordering the module, but he can look at his photographs online and email the orders. Okay. Um, It says here, yeah, it says uh, it's a lot of money to carry around with you when you take a check. It's giving you a cloud, it's giving you a statement when you take a check. Yes, I would, sir. You just have to handle the paperwork. You just have to handle the paperwork. Move on, straight through the paperwork. Uh, another question that you can ask is which categories would you like to be listed under in Google? I'd like to be listed under construction, paving, tiling. You're right, in the back of the contract, right there. Construction, paving, tiling, all the categories that you're going to put in on his website description. And then you fill in the front of the contract and then boom. Bank details, authorized, thank you very much. It's giving you a buying signal. It's you just got to be sharp. And the, the more you practice, the more clients you see, you become, you become habits. Very good. Um, right, is there anything else that you want to discuss more? You know, this last statement, which which categories would you like to be listed in? I love that. Yeah. Who can say no to that? Can't say no to it because he's going to say, oh yeah, I do paving, I do construction, I do waterproofing, I do this, 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 this. Write the categories down. It's a, it's a going ahead close. It's confirming he's going ahead. Write them down. Fill in the frame and it's done. Um, paperwork, get the paperwork done on the first meeting. Let's say we'll fill it in next week or next year. So no that so yeah, I'll just No, it. no, he needs to know that. <laughs> 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 because you know what? If the guy has filled in a contract and he's given his signature, he's given his commitment, that's what he's done. If you don't get the paperwork done, He's going to design a free site for him. He's going to stuff you around as often as he wants. You've got to take control. Uh, no, thank you very, very, very much, Peter. I'll get you a lot. I'm afraid to ask what a typical salesperson is, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 o
Kérdés, 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 kérdés